Hi, welcome back to our channel. In our last video, we went to the Heineken Museum. It was an amazing experience. We got to see the bottling and production of famous Heineken beer, and we even got to have some samples of the beer. That was pretty cool. In this video, I'm gonna take you to see the red light district in Amsterdam. But before that, we're gonna try some delicious pancakes at a restaurant called Carousel. Let's check this out. So we just got out of the Heineken experience and it was a great experience. We're now super hungry, so we stopped at a place right across the street called the Day Carousel. It looked real busy. Uh, they specialize in pancakes. So we got some papparis, which are the tiny little pancakes, and I got a waffle. So I'm going to try that. And I started off with a little bit of coffee, and if you look, the coffee is really nice it's got a little froth on top really good really smooth nice coffee i got some cream and sugar in it and they always give you like a little something with it usually it's a chocolate but let's see this together ah it's a little wafer so they give you a little wafer with this And I noticed what's funny about when you go to Europe and you get coffee, they usually give you a little something on the side, not like America. America, you just get the coffee itself. I've gotten in the past where they give you a little chocolate, but this little wafer, which is kind of cute. So I'll try a little bit. Mm, yummy. The coffee absorbs in the wafer. God, yummy. So this is kind of like a cinnamon cookie, but it goes really good with the coffee. So this is our first dish and we're starting off with a Belgium waffle. And this is what the Belgium waffles look like. They're generally square. Uh, we have powdered sugar. We have some kiwi. We have some pineapple, bananas, some strawberries, and I believe these may be cherries. So this is what they call the mixed fruit. And then this is whipped butter. So let's try this out. The presentation is really nice. So I have a feeling it's going to probably get taste just as nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of the whipped butter on some. Just try a little bit here. Then let's try some banana. Let's get a strawberry. Get some pineapple. Get a little pineapple slice here. And a little bit of this, looks like cherries here. And we'll try this out. Oh man, it is good. It's crispy, it's flaky, it's a little sweet, but then you have all the fruit flavors. You have a little sour, you have sweet. It's so good with all the little bit. Let's try some of this with the pineapple and some of the cherry. See if I can get that all in there in one bite. Give it, trying to give it a shot there. There we go. Ooh. This is the best waffle I have ever had. That's why you have to get a, a waffle in Europe. It began in Belgium. Amsterdam's not that far away. Belgium is where you get waffles. That's where they originated. So this today's very similar to a traditional Belgian waffle. Thank you. It's really good.
it's a kiwi right so i got some whipped cream here i'm going to put this all over the, the waffle add a little bit of this Go, look at that. That's a good bite. <laughs> Fruity, sweet, crunchy, all in one. Nice waffle. So the next thing we ordered was pop -Paris. I hope I'm saying it right. These are mini pancakes and they have powdered sugar and a little bit of butter. So let's try one of these. Maybe put some more, a little bit of the powdered sugar inside. Oh man. Wow. First thing I noticed, they're hot. Not spicy, but temperature hot, which means they're very fresh. So when they come out, they probably come out right. They cook them, they put them on the plate, and it's like really, really hot. So, oh man, it's so good. And the powdered sugar is really subtle. You don't need syrup or anything on this. They're just sweet enough. They're just perfect. Mm. And these are why these are so popular. Puffery's. Mini pancakes. Wonderful. I can't stop eating these. I want more and more and more. I could probably get a hundred of these. <laughs> wow. So we also wanted something a little less sweet. So we got a ham and cheese. This is on a little mini baguette. So we're gonna try this. And you have the cheese and you got slices of ham in there. So let's try this out. It's simple, but tasty. The bread is really fresh. You can tell they bake it. The ham and the cheese are very soft. It's a simple sandwich, but it's very satisfying. So I believe the cheese is like a white cheese. We call them white American. It might be a little bit different out here. And then the ham. But you don't really need much more. It's pretty good just the way it is. So it also comes with a room butter. So I'm going to try some of this. See if that changes the taste at all. Try a little of that on the top. Let's see what that does. Gives it a little creamy taste. Good. Go with the room butter too. Tastes just like regular butter, but it gives it a little creamier taste. Good. So we just uh, ate at Carousel uh, right near the Heineken Museum, uh, Heineken Experience. Uh, really good food, very friendly service, wonderful pancakes, waffles, pufferies. It was all really good. Definitely recommend that. And now we're going to walk the streets and see what else we can investigate in Amsterdam. We 
We are now in front of the most famous landmarks in Amsterdam. This is the Rijksmuseum. And this has famous art. The most famous art is actually Rembrandt. And one of the most famous Rembrandt pieces that they have is called the Night Watch. So I'm a big fan of Rembrandt. I'm a big fan of this piece called the Night Watch. I've wanted to see this, and this is a big place for tourists to visit if you're into museum watching. It was unfortunate we were not able to see inside the Rich Museum. We happened to arrive at 6 p.m. and they were already closed. At least we were able to see it from the outside. For future reference, reserve your ticket and of course, get there early. Now we are on our way to the Red Light District, which is about a 30 minute walk from the Rich Museum to the Red Light District. Let's walk and see the view. We are now in the questionable red light district. Uh, this was an area where uh, a lot of people go just because they want to see things they haven't seen before. But it's not what I expected. It's really, really busy and there's a lot of people. There's even families going down here. So we're just going to take a look and see what all the hype is about. This is in Amsterdam. Let's go. <laughs>
red light district. The locals call it the Wallen. The reason that God's name was prostitutes used to decorate their brothels with red colored lanterns and the place began called the red light district. By the 19th century, police began to arrest women on the streets and they began a new way to entice men from the windows of their brothels. This became known as window prostitution. The district contains a network of alleys that consists of 300 one-room cabins rented by the prostitutes. Many people visit this area to see the many sex shops as well as the cannabis museum. They can also visit a coffee shop where selling marijuana is legal. This is what the liberal and tolerant attitudes of Amsterdam is all about. Looks like mostly what you're going to find in the red light district is usually sex shops and a lot of bars and there were some museums like we saw this huge line for a prostitution museum so it looks like that's mostly what they have they do have places where they have like women we did see one in an alleyway and but she was completely covered or at least in a bikini so they do have that but i think it's mostly just oddities and things for like people that you know just the tourists you just want to see this sexually liberal area of Amsterdam called the Red Line. 